Welcome to the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, brought to you by GuitarZoom.com. If you want to improve your guitar playing, keep listening. If you want to improve even faster, go to GuitarZoom.com, where you'll find all of Steve's premium courses, masterclasses, and memberships that'll help you quickly and easily improve your playing. Now, here's your host, Steve Stein. Okay, check one, two. Looks like my levels are okay. Please let me know if you can hear me and see me okay, hear my voice, hear my guitar okay. Uh, What we're going to be doing today, hey everybody, thanks for so much for taking time out to join me today. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about down picking. Uh, I'm going to try and help you a little bit with understanding some exercises that you can do, but more importantly, I'm going to try and get you to understand how to sort of reverse engineer the songs that you're learning to benefit some of the techniques that you're working on. When I was younger, uh, I would just learn songs because I enjoy them, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. You know, there's a favorite song that you learn how to play. But I started learning that if there was a particular technique I was trying to work on, instead of just always working with the metronome, I found it really fun to actually try and find a song that matched whatever it was I was working on. And I'm going to show you how to do that today with down picking. Okay, so we're going to talk about down picking today. That's going to be the the focus of this workshop. Now, I want to remind you, if for some reason you're interested in learning a bit more about soloing and techniques of soloing, I would love for you to take uh, a look over at GuitarZoom.com at my guitar course, Guitar Solos, which you can obviously check out by going to GuitarZoom.com. And if you like this video, please do me a favor, subscribe to the channel and, you know, like it, share it, that sort of thing. And please comment too. If you've got some other down picking songs, I've just started creating a playlist on Spotify that I will share with you on the, I don't know if it'll be the YouTube Steve Stein or Guitar Zoom channel. Hopefully both of those will put the Spotify link in there for you. And you can see a bunch of songs that I talk about today which should should help you. And if you have some other ideas, which I'm sure you do, I would love to hear them because I just started creating this playlist and I would love to add another 50 tunes in there. So if you can comment, give me some ideas, that would be great. So what we're going to focus on today is down picking. Now, some of the songs I'm going to talk about, they might have some other techniques. There might be some alternate picking and things like that. But basically what you want to do is find a section in the song and just practice that down picking element. You might not learn the whole song. You might just learn a section of it. And that's okay. So before we get started with that, let's just talk about a technique. I call it the three minute uh, technique. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a metronome and set it for three minutes and you're going to try and practice down picking. Now let's talk about down picking just a little bit here. Now when you down pick, it's really important that you find the proper pick. And there is no one right or wrong guitar pick to use. I use uh, a fairly medium sized pick. Uh, in terms of its 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 size, and then I use a 2.0 for thickness. Now, for some people, that's way too thick, and it's okay. Everybody's looking for something different in a guitar pick. But you want to find something that's really comfortable for you. And for me, one of the most important things is I grip the pick toward the front of the pick, so there's not much pick sticking out. That way, when I go to do my picking, I can sense that just the tip of that pick is hitting that that string, right? So I'm not way I'm not you know, way back on the guitar pick like this or something like that. I'm I'm choking up really close to the front of that pick and that's how I hold it. Then the second part is, is you have to make sure that you're relaxing everything, especially as your picking gets faster. You need to relax from the neck on down. Don't tense up, otherwise you're only gonna be able to do this for a limited amount of time and you're gonna get sore and you're gonna need to stop. And the next thing is figuring out where your actual picking point comes from. For some people, their point comes from kind of the the uh, bicep. For some, it's kind of from the uh, this this part of your arm right here, right? Um, and then for some people, it's the wrist, and for some people, it's even the fingers, right? So forearm, bicep, somewhere around there, or wrist or fingers. So as you watch me pick. You can see I'm getting more movement from my wrist than I am from my forearm or my bicep locking my elbow like this. And I might even move to just doing the fingers, just depending. Now, none of this is right or wrong. Just understand that if you lock and you move more from kind of the elbow area, focusing on the forearm and the bicep, you it's going to be a a more tense motion than it is moving from the wrist. And again, 
you have to figure out what feels the best for you. But the most important thing is, is no matter what you do, try and learn to remind yourself to relax as you're doing this. So if I was doing this exercise, this three minute exercise that I'm going to show you right now, what I would do, I'm going to set the metronome at 140 here. It could be any tempo. And again, you need to figure this out. What you're going to do is down pick for three minutes at that tempo. And what should happen if you've, if you've found the right tempo is that you should be able to last throughout the entire three minutes. If you set it way too fast and you can't actually play comfortably with the tempo, again, don't, don't ever try and pretend. Okay. You, you might do that on stage or something like that, but when you're actually practicing and really trying to get good at this stuff, don't pretend. Find a tempo that really does work for you that you can play down picking for three straight minutes. Okay. The other thing to do with this is understand that if you get done with the three minutes and it really didn't impact you, chances are the tempo was too slow. If you can't finish the three minutes or you finish the three minutes, but it wasn't very good, like you weren't able to really lock into the tempo, then again, the tempo is probably too fast. What should happen is when you start off and you get about a minute in, minute and a half in, you should start feeling some tension. And again, you want to relax. You want to try and learn to fight past that and, and relax all your muscles. So let me start this. And that's what I would do. Again, I'm not going to bore you with three minutes of that, but uh, hold on a second. Let me shut off that right there. There we go. Um, you would do that for three minutes. Now, if you get about you know a minute into it and you start really tightening up, Again, you need to, to, well, the more you do it, obviously, the more your muscles are going to uh, to react positively to what you're trying to do. You want to make sure that you stretch out, massage, all that kind of stuff. But if you just can't do it, then you need to lower down the tempo. Don't worry about it, right? Don't, don't feel bad because you have to lower the tempo. The most important thing is, is putting a point on the map, right? You figure out where you are, and then you know whether you're doing as good, not as good, or better in the weeks to come. And it's really important to be able to do that. So this is a great exercise to really develop that. And the faster you go, the less you want to move, right? If you're doing something like this, that kind of movement might be great when you're trying to play something that's slower. That's okay. But as you get faster, you have to start relaxing a little bit to be able to play at those faster tempos. And the distance that your pick is moving across that string needs to lessen, right? If you really think about it, when you play faster, you don't want a lot of distance. You want to stay as close to that string as possible. If you're enjoying this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, go to guitarzoom.com and consider becoming a premium member. There are three memberships to choose from. VIP, which gives you instant access to a library of short but powerful courses as well as new bite-sized lessons each month. There's also Play Songs that gives you step-by-step -step lessons so you can learn to play your favorite songs fast. And finally, there's Masterclass, university-level training on everything from soloing to music theory, from blues to home recording. For more info about these memberships and all the premium courses available to you, go to guitarzoom.com. Now back to the podcast. So I'm going to look at my playlist, but I'm not going to play these actual songs because YouTube might actually um, mute these things. So I'm not going to worry about that. But what I am going to do is just play you a small little segment, hopefully not enough to for YouTube to mute this, of some songs. Okay? So for instance... If you started off doing the 140, right? If I go back to that 140 tempo. Dun, dun, dun. Let's say you were at 140, and I'm doing eighth notes, two per click. Okay, then I start thinking, okay, well, what's a song that I could learn how to play that's around 140 that maybe I could use this technique? And again, I'm not saying you have to learn the entire song and the solo and everything in it. You might just learn a riff out of it and just have some fun with it. Doesn't matter, Okay. So what I'm going to focus on is Am I Evil? So if I go... You see? And just play that, and that's in the playlist. So if you find this, again, all you'd have to do is go on Spotify and just type in Steve Stein downpicking. 
um, and you'll find it anyway. If you just type in those words, Steve Stein downpicking, and you can subscribe. And again, I would love to hear some other options that you've got too. So I don't want the playlist to be nothing but really difficult songs. I want it to be a variety of things, right? So for instance, Am I Evil is one of the first ones I have on the list because it really isn't very fast. And you could just learn to go, just learning how to do that. Down picking, doing palm muting and strumming, right? So when I go like this, I got to fix that pedal on the floor there. See how I'm strumming and I'm down picking. I'm, I'm going back and forth. Right? To be able to do that. Those are really great things to learn how to do because most songs don't just have palm muting or just have strumming. Some do, but some move back and forth. Okay, so let's say we went to the next song on the list, which is uh, Bell Toll. So I've got... Now you'll notice there, okay, that the picking is faster, but we don't do it for as long. We stop and strum, which gives your wrist a bit of a break, which is a great thing to learn how to do. Right? So you can get faster at those down picks, but then you've got this relief by strumming in between. Okay? Which is a very important thing when you're playing songs, especially when you're doing faster down picking or something like that. When you get to parts where you're able to give yourself a break, it feels great and it kind of, you know, re-energizes you so you can keep going. And there's just a ton of them in here, okay? Let's say we went with something like uh, the Ramones, right? So if I did this, right? And if you watch like them on stage and you watch Johnny play, Johnny Ramone plays really fast. I'm just doing the studio versions. If you want to, if you love punk music or love the Ramones, you can always go with a live version, which is way faster. But Johnny was like one of the early grandfathers of fast down picking. Um, and really prided himself on being able to play very fast down picking. So when you do the studio versions, again, you're working on the technique. It doesn't need to be that fast, but you see, so that's something else you could do. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of them. I've got, for instance, like Painkiller by Judas Priest, which is another great one. <laughs> Okay, and again, always bouncing back and forth between strumming and palm muting. Now, a lot of these songs are also available. I've done uh, instructions on all of, well, I shouldn't say all these songs, but a lot of these songs in, uh, we have a club at Guitar Zoom called Play Songs. So if you go to guitarzoom.com, you'll see right on the front page, there'll be a thing called Play Songs, where I teach all these songs and there's tab for them and all sorts of different things like that. But um, anyway, so there's all kinds of those. Another one, uh, Number of the Beast, right? That sort of thing. So, and again, some of this may wind up muted uh, after this plays live. I don't know, but um, hopefully it doesn't. So there's just all kinds of these. But the point is, is that you can develop certain techniques that you practice with a metronome or just practicing, you know, really trying to just practice relaxing relaxing your muscles. And again, you don't have to pick really hard, especially the faster you go, you might actually wind up picking quite delicately to be able to keep that speed going. Now, what makes this different than the three minute exercise is the three minute exercise, you're not doing any, you're not getting any relief. You're not strumming or, you know, getting a pause. <laughs> You know, that sort of thing where you can take a little break and then jump back in. The three minute exercise is literally doing uh, palm mute or, well, down picking. I'm palm muting too, but doing that for three minutes. Where in a regular song, normally you're going to get that relief, which is a really nice thing. That's why it's nice to practice various techniques, which is good, but then practice along with some songs that you enjoy. And again, this playlist has got a ton of different things for you to look at. So. Uh, you know, I mean, there's obviously the things, the staples, right? You know, things like that to learn how to play, especially these sections. You know, that kind of thing, which is really important to, to learn how to do too with down picking. Now, the last thing I want to say about this is if you encounter one of these songs and you have learned how to play it instead by maybe alternate picking some parts that I'm down picking, or, you know, you, you're not physically capable of playing Master of Puppets with down picking. You'd rather do alternate picking or something at this point. Again, most important thing is, is that you're enjoying yourself 
and you're picking up the guitar on a daily basis and playing and practicing. That's what I'm most concerned with. So it's okay if you do them differently than I do, if you play some of the parts differently and where I'm alternate picking, you're down picking or vice versa. That's okay. But this just gives you a general idea of some songs that you can dig into that really are based primarily on down picking that you can explore. So again, I'd love to hear some other ideas that you've got. And if you want to explore these ideas even further, go to guitarzoom.com, check out my guitar course, Guitar Solos, where we talk about all kinds of different things. And uh, you could also check out the uh, Club Play songs as well if you're really interested in learning how to play a bunch of songs with tab and instruction and key, solo, scale breakdowns, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, hopefully this helps you a little bit. The next workshop, we're going to be talking about alternate picking, some techniques and some songs that you could use to practice as well. So take soon, okay? Next time on the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, so alternate picking, let's talk about this for, for just a minute. When you alternate pick, there's a number of different things that you have to think about from the style and size of the pick that you're using, the thickness of the pick that you're using, and make sure it's something that, that really fits you comfortably. Now I use these, they're called hawk picks, okay? And I use uh, this kind of medium sized hawk pick and I use a 2.0 millimeter, it's, it's a perfect size for me. For some people, it's a little bit thick. Uh, I'm sure for others, it's probably not thick enough, right? But that's what I use. And what I like about the little bit thicker pick, even though my hands are pretty small, is that I can choke up towards the front of the pick, which is what I want to be able to alternate pick at faster speeds. I don't want to hold the guitar pick, you know, way back here or something like that. I want to try and choke up as much as I can and still, you know, clearing the strings of my fingers as I pick. Now, the other thing, there's lots of different techniques about this, and there's lots of, of different wonderful players out there and teachers that teach a lot of different ways of picking this. But what I want you to think about are just a couple of different things if you're trying to get started in this and figure out how this works. Hey, Steve Stein here from GuitarZoom.com, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, can I ask you a favor? Please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend. Your feedback means more to me than you'll ever know. And be sure to check out my YouTube channels where you'll find over 1,000 videos to help you with your guitar playing. Thanks again for listening. Stay positive, keep playing, and keep having fun. If you'd like some help with your guitar playing but you're not sure how to get started, go to guitarzoom.com and look for the Help Me Choose survey. By answering a few simple questions, you'll get Steve's personal recommendation of the perfect course for you. All this and more is available for you at guitarzoom.com.